booktube this is felicity speaking from my house which is a library my tagline is my house is a library and there's some of it behind me you can see this is my first video so who knows how this is going to work out anyway i thought i would start with a small piece of my collection which weigh a very great deal these were the books that i was um, optimistically going to read in march and didn't so there you go I'm going to start with the one I'm reading right now, which is uh, this really lovely collection whoops, of um, the entire Essays of Montagna. You can't actually see because the, the, the spine is kind of um, a little buffed up, but um, there's a really, it comes with, it's a really nice set. There's four volumes. The first three volumes are the actual essays. Um, the last one is two or three thousand footnotes. Um, talking about talking about what's actually going on the translations the original but this is it's really pretty um it's a, a very nice reading copy and i've been reading them for years in the selected and i thought i would get the whole thing and so i have it and i am working my way very slowly through it this is so it's montagna um some while ago i picked up a number of things i'm always picking up things at uh <laughs> halls i not halls like uh Mark, who always pays $15 for 10,000 books. I have no idea how he does it. Um, I pay a lot more, but I do more or less um, get whatever I feel like getting. This one was a really interesting book. This is um, this one I was teasing uh, Jason uh, because his library does resemble the Warburg collection way more than mine does, which is both alphabetized and also completely random. This is a really interesting history of the Warburg family interesting family dysfunctional uh very very well uh very very literate very um uh, well thought of well established very wealthy um and uh and pretty much came to their end during the um during uh, the period leading up to world war ii and the nazi uh the nazi dealings in in, uh, in germany um, this is by Ron Cherno and is um, the Warburgs and is a history of a very important family of which I was only really interested because of the Warburg library and collection. This is a fascinating book and as you can see it's very large and I'm not really all the way through it yet. Okay, Warburgs. I'm working my way through probably the second or third time complete complete Rabelais uh, with the Heath Robinson illustrations which are absolutely delightful they are hysterical they're hilarious they're uh, really uh, quite the thing this is this is well everybody knows about Rabelais but um, <laughs> maybe not the illustrations these are um, these are Heath Robinson who is not really a comedic uh, illustrator but he did some he did some wonderful and very different things this is this this has some of these uh these uh, big illustrations that also has these little tiny snapshots and there's hundreds of them in this book this is a real real treat to read and i'm enjoying rereading this one tremendously so this is rabelais he's in my library what can i say um i uh started at the beginning of this year with my massive i will never finish this project as long as i live and that is reading the entire encyclopedia britannica volume uh, volume, I'm still working on volume one. This is the 1911 uh, Britannica, which is a famous one, and it's very, very, very dense. There are a couple million words in it, but it does have some very nice pictures, and it, um, and it's, and it's uh, reasonably well uh, edited, and um, the print is incredibly small, which is why I realized it was never, never going to finish this as long as I live. And there's maps. There's pretty much anything you could ask for, except that the print is really small. Anyway, I'm still working my way through it. Uh, I haven't given up. <laughs> May get there yet. I have 26 volumes of this encyclopedia. Um, one of, uh, a, a book that I acquired last year, absolutely delighted to get. I'm a huge fan of Nicholas Basbane. I can't see a book on books in a in a bookstore without. Um, buying it immediately I'm um, I have absolutely no restraint anyway Basbane is one of my favorite I'm still figuring out how to get this organized Basbane is one of my favorite um, authors of books on books he's been in business for a very long time fascinating writer quite 
witty, literate. And um, this one I saw, this one I saw actually when it first came out for a lot more money. I think it was a limited edition of some kind that came out in um, uh, 2013, 14, maybe a little bit later. Probably has something to say about it. A consideration of all things paper. What's not to like? Anyway, there are certainly illustrations. It talks, so he actually does a... He, he's, he's wandering all over the world, um, seeing how paper is made, the history of paper. It's a fascinating read, and you can see there's my bookmark. My library has hundreds of books with bookmarks because I start things, and I don't always finish them right away. So I'm going to come back to it sometime, maybe. I have 10,672 volumes in my library. It's probably going to be a while before I get to finish everything. Uh, this particular one was um, printed in, it was actually came out in 2013. So there you go. I was pretty much on the money. I, I did see it. It was, I think it had a couple of things with some special parts to it, but I found this um, on uh, Biblio and decided I really needed to get a copy. And so I have it and I'm reading it along with everything else. I'll show you in a, at the end what it kind of looks like. Anyway, these are different sorts of things in my library. This is one that I've had for a little while. It sort of scratches an itch here. I'm fascinated with mythology, and I had finished reading last year the absolutely wonderful set by excuse me, by, yes, the Joseph Campbell Quartet. It's not down here in the library. It's upstairs now in my um, a library annex. <laughs> but uh, he mentions he pulls in he pulls in everything, pulls out all the stops, floats all the boats, and anything you could possibly be interested in, this is, this is, got it, that he, he has it. So um, this book uh, entered my library because I decided I knew zero about Hindu mythology. I needed to find out. So I put a book on it. It also is only just begun. I have one of my very favorite um, science writers, of course, Edward Wilson just died this year, uh, fairly recently. Consilience is one of his well-known ones. I like everything of his he's written. A wonderful man. He died. He was in his 90s. He was a, uh, had been in his wits about him till the end. He he wrote he wrote scores of things and is f just a wonderful writer. If you like science written by a scientist for non-scientists, E. O. Wilson's your man. A wonderful, wonderful writer. Anyway, I, I, I'm partway through this. I, I picked up Consilience sort of to read as a sort of a memorial to him because, because I think he's so wonderful, and because I had just finished something else. But it may be a while before I get through this one. And an enormous intellectual adventure. There you go. Some people like it. Some people don't. It is a book by a scientist that's for non-scientists. So that's me. I'm not a scientist. Um, in this groundbreaking new book, the American biologist Edward O. Wilson, considered one to be was to be one of the world's greatest living scientists, argues for the fundamental unity of all knowledge and the need to search for consilience. Reminds me of a paper I once wrote. I used to ask my father to look at them. He was a scholar, and um, it was a book report on something I think I was reading. I was writing a book report on the uh, the letters of uh, Bonhoeffer from, from prison. And um, I began my essay with, basically this book is about the relationship between God and man. My father looked at me with a sort of a half smile, half pitying face, and he said, Felicity, every book is about the relationship between God and man. You can't, you can't do that. So I scratched it out of the book report and I <laughs> went on my merry way. Speaking of my father, um, I have a, I have a couple of books here of his that I've also started again because of another book, which I will get to at the very end. Um, it is the history of the world by, I don't have it here. It's sitting over in another part of my library. But I have two books from my father, which I've had for a while and I pretty much haven't gotten through them because, oh my goodness, uh, you kind of need to have a lot of language in order to get through this. Languages I don't have, such as Ara Aramaic, Hebrew, Sanskrit, <laughs> Latin, Greek, pretty much you name it. Anyway, these are two books by my dad. The Lebanon and the Phoenicia was the one which he wrote when he had just finished being a professor of Near Eastern Studies at Beirut um, shortly after we came back to the United States and it was published a bit after that. We came back in the US to the US in 1965. The other one is a um, a somewhat more popularized uh, uh, book 
which compresses the almost impossible to read by somebody like me, um, Israel and Hellas, which was his, which is his magnum opus, and um, and pretty much pulls together everything that he'd ever thought about or had learned um, in the course of his many, many, many long years of studying um, about uh, social and political uh, comparisons um, of various different cultures and how the uh, peregrinations of scholars and um, pirates and uh, uh, businessmen and um, uh, traders, not always being able to tell them apart, uh, how they came to um, disseminate uh, knowledge and uh, goods around the ancient world. Anyway, it's my dad's stuff, John Pyramid Brown. <laughs> not uh, something that it's real easy to read, but actually because it's exactly in the period that I was reading in the history book. Oh, looking over there. History of the World by uh, by Roberts and um, and, and somebody else. <laughs> uh, yeah, in my library. It's also a labyrinth. Sometimes I can't find things. There's a couple of books that I had thought were going to be part of my March of the Mammoths, and the March of the Mammoths ended March going out like a mouse, and I didn't finish any of them except Sherlock Holmes, but there you go. How things go. Anyway, this has been on my list for a really long time. This was uh, 266 by Roberto Bolaño, and I uh, started it. I, I started it. it. It was it's a very dense, very dense for me novel. Really enjoyed it. It's fascinating, and it kind of got it kind of got a little crazy, and then my life got crazy, and so I put it aside and I picked it up again, and it too is um, got a bookmark. I'm working. I'm working my way through it. There you go. 266 by Bologna. Um, I'm also, I have not actually started this one, but this is uh, <laughs> Don DeLillo's Underworld. I actually like Don DeLillo, Don DeLillo a lot, and I've read a number of his things. This one I hadn't, and it would have definitely qualified for March of the Mammoths, but, but I haven't started on it yet. So looking forward to reading it, but it hasn't quite happened yet. Um, two that I'm currently uh, working my way through both through again and through for the first time. One is this great big fat edition of Plato. This is a really pretty one. This is um, uh, the Bollingen series from Princeton and uh, it is everything that Plato wrote that we still have. Um, there is that. Uh, if I move it over to this side, you can see that on the other side of me is my giant collection of everything um, that ever that we still have from the ancient world. There's my lobe library in the background there. You can't really see it. Ah, there you go. It was green and red, and there's a lot more of it. <laughs> That's my current, uh, current when I have the money, this is what I'm trying to actually collect. So this is the Bollingen Plato. It's a very nicely designed volume. It's pretty dense because there's a lot of things in it. Plato's one of the very few authors that we do actually have a lot of um, pieces of left and his uh, and because of course Plato became one of the founding founding philosophical roots of Christianity we didn't manage to lose this one it's good anyway um, I was rereading this the other day um, some of them I haven't read at all because my um, collection of Plato's several smaller smaller um, books that have uh, different different uh, um, dialogues the famous ones maybe not every not maybe not every uh, every one but I wanted to read the rest of them because I've read the Republic and Phaedo and Crito and a couple of other slightly more obscure ones but I haven't even read the death of the apology the 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 speech that Socrates made saying sorry not sorry at his trial where he was condemned to death for um, saying uncomfortable things <laughs> sort of thing um, so there's my Plato and the last one and the last one is uh, my old friend Plutarch's Lives and this is not a lobe but this is the Dryden translation and is one that I've had for a long time got it when I was pretty much a kid and didn't know what the heck I was getting um, but this one was this one was um, from the library of Esmer Clark, who is the lady who lived down the street from us, and she's the same lady that I got um, 
that beautiful pride and prejudice that i still have and i got both of these from her and i was very very pleased to have it and it's one that is never left my library so i'm reading it again i've not read all of them but i've read many of them so this is a small scattershot um selection for my library uh this is my library and i'm not going to do sorry uh jason i'm not going to do a shelf by shelf library tour because it'll take me the rest of my life and i'll probably die first <laughs> it's really too many books and i keep getting more uh, but i may uh if this isn't too weird i may actually do this again and try for another another video this is going to be my first one if i don't run screaming and if uh, it, if it's not a complete disaster we'll see anyway it's kind of fun it's a short video get started this is felicity i'm speaking to you from my library which is my house and um thank you look forward to hearing from you and i think if i ever do manage to get this up on youtube i'll uh, have a place for comments thanks thanks for watching bye